gamers, for this quick tips, we are going to look at a custom designed dice tray. Now this dice tray I found it uh, used at a secondhand store for some sort of rolling poker game, um, but I noticed that it worked really well for my other dice, these D20s that I use in Dungeons and Dragons. Now the design is not great, it's not a great piece of wood, it's been routered and cut out from a single block, hollowed out here in the middle, but I really like the felt on the bottom, there's this black bottom. So I thought, why not try to make something a little fancier out of this simple piece of wood? The first thing I did now was I got some sandpaper and I wanna put the design on the bottom here. So you wanna make sure that you make it really smooth so that printed design can actually transfer quite well. And since I had the sandpaper out, I went ahead and sanded the rest of it, trying to follow the grain as much as possible to smoothen off all the sides and make it uh, ready for the transfer and just so it feels good in my hands. And then I went and printed out the paper. Now it's important here that you get it the right size, but also that you print it backwards because when you transfer it, you're going to actually have uh, the transfer go down. Uh, it's gonna be a mirrored image. So you have to take your image, flip it around and then print it out. So I'm gonna use the larger of the two here and I'm gonna go ahead and cut around it and get pretty close to it because this larger image fits pretty well on the bottom of that dice tray. Uh, so there's not much extra space to play around with. I'm gonna go ahead and try and cut it pretty close to the top here, and uh, we're gonna be taping that onto the piece of wood itself. Now as I take this and flip it around and try and get it positioned, I realized that I had way too much paper on the top. Uh, I had no place really to tape the paper down. You'll see why we need to tape it in a second. So I went back and decided to cut it a little bit closer. I don't want to get too close because uh, I don't want to end up melting the tape, but uh, close enough that I'm able then to tape it down uh, so I can lift it and check the progress of the transfer. And there you go, I have a little bit left there on the top. So with that extra space, I take a single piece of tape and put it right across the top there, uh, making sure that I don't change the paper position because I found it perfectly centered place there, which is really good. Press that tape down and you can see now I can go ahead and lift this up and uh, that'll be great for when I actually make the transfer itself. So let's go ahead and take our iron now, and this is really important. You turn your iron uh, full heat, turn it all the way up as hot as it goes, and make sure that you empty it of any water. You do not want steam because steam will ruin the paper and it will ruin the transfer. So turn it on and uh, go ahead and let all that steam disappear. Now I've got my paper down on the, on the wood and I'm ready to make the transfer, so I'm gonna take my iron and I'm going to press down pretty hard. And you wanna really uh, use the edges of the iron if you can. You want the heat, but also the pressure. So I'm going to try to make this transfer by pushing down as hard as I can. And the great thing about having that tape in place now is after you do this for a while, you're able to check the progress of your transfer and see how it is actually going. So I'm going to keep pressing down here and uh, let me take a look at it now and see how it looks. We can carefully peel off the paper. You see that some of the ink has gone down, um, but not quite where I want it yet. Uh, there's still some blotchy parts there. So I'm gonna put it back down. The tape holds it in the same position. And then I go back and, and reapply some more heat and pressure. Pushing really hard and after a few minutes, I have a pretty decent transfer uh, that I really like. It looks pretty sharp on the bottom with that red on the wood. And you can see it doesn't really come off. Uh, it's stuck on there. It has a bit of this uh, rustic look to it, which I really like uh, on the bottom of that dice tray. Really sharp, really nice, custom little easy project to make your dice tray look better. And uh, now I have something really fun to take with me to my next Dungeons & Dragons game. Well, thank you for joining us here today at Grey Army Gaming for the future of fantasy.